And you read Galatians 6 and 1. Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fall, ye which are spiritual, restore such an one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. Read that again one more time, Mike, so the people can listen to it loud and clearly, please. Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fall, ye which are spiritual, restore such an one in the spirit of meekness. Considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. So that verse is basically saying, just because you put yourself into trouble now, you let the devil tempt you. Remember, people, it's not over. So long Christ lived, it's not over. It's not over. That's why some of us are here today in church. It's important that when you get into certain situation that either tip you or cause you problem, you come to the place of God in the house of the Lord so the leaders, the people, can restore your faith. Amen. Don't be weak and say, man, I done done this, somebody gonna get locked up. Man, they give me six more probation. You just let the devil persuade you even more. Tell me to do more things so you can put more years on you. No, be encouraged. Come to the house of God so the leaders can restore your faith. Say pass the test. Say pass the test. Say pass the test. When you're tempted, remember this. Come to the house of God Amen. so the people can restore you Amen. and teach you Amen. the right way. Amen. Amen. That, that means you, you're gonna grow up. You're gonna grow up in the faith. You're gonna grow up. That's how I started. I've been through so I got in a situation I'm thinking, man, I'm gonna go to jail. But you know what my father did? My father's a preacher. My father, my father took me to another man of God. I didn't know this man of God from nowhere. He nurtured me like a baby. I was raising up. I, I was I was to the point I was going to uh Bible study, I was to the point I was going to homework clubs and everything. This man was raising me up. My focus was now on God. The, the, the trouble, the temptation I went through, it wasn't on my mind no more Amen. because I know the Lord would deliver me from Amen. it. Amen. Amen. And you know what God did? I was supposed to get into a serious situation. I should have been locked up. But God sent me to these people then. Now I know in my lifetime why he sent me to these people. Only to restore me. Amen. The Lord will restore you. When you're being tempted or when you fall a victim of temptation, yes. you can be restored. Yes. It's not over. Yes. Once Christ lives, you're not convicted. Amen. 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 The decision you make is how God can be pleased with you. Uh -huh. Let me say that one more time. The decision you make uh -huh. is how God can be pleased with you. Amen. Church, what kind of decision are we going to make? Are we going to make a right one or a wrong one? Amen. And even if you make a wrong one, just know that God will restore you out of it. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. A lot of us want what we know we can't have. When you see something right away, you want it. That if the woman just passed right by you, you want her. Or the man just passed right by you, you want her. Leave those people alone. Don't get tempted for what you see. The eyes can deceive you. The eyes is deceitful. Don't let the eyes deceive you. Don't get tempted from your own eyes. If you know you're married, you have a boyfriend or girlfriend or a spouse you've grown up with. Leave those other person alone. Walk away from temptation. You know what Joshua did? Oh, Joseph. I mean, matter of fact, Joseph. You know what Joseph did? When my temptation was rising, I had to learn. That's how I got grown in the spirit. Because I had a lustful desire at first. But when God drove me out of it, those girls I used to touch at 5 a.m. in the morning, I had to run away and trust them. No, I got church tomorrow. I got church tomorrow. I need help. That's how I took it. I just, the enemy was defeated and I started doing that. I grew in the Lord. And slowly and slowly and slowly, the Lord helped me with my wife. Slowly, he grew me out of it. Church said, pass the test. Say, I will pass the test. Say, I will pass the test. In James 1, 4 and 3. In James chapter 1, verse 1 to 4, we see the desire, hot desire, lust desire, can try, can be dangerous. If you have the time, you go home and read it, you'll see how that your own desire can be dangerous for you. 
The Bible says when lust is conceived, it can cause us to sin. What is lust? A strong desire. Conceive means something I've been planning in the mind. So when you plan to do those things that you know that's going to tempt you, you already have conceived. You already have sin. So why not stop planning it? Say, I will pass the test. 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 Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Mike, can you go read 1 James verse 22, please? And this, before Mike, before you read, I already didn't taught y'all how to go about it. And I explained the situation. If you have the time, go at home and read it deeper. You can define temptation on Google, you can define it, and then you start studying it yourself. But this is how we're gonna go about not being tempted. Because if you're strong in the law and the power of it might, you will not be tempted. You won't let foolish thing come about you for you to drag yourself right into it. Mike, can you read James verse 1 and 22, please? But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. Wow. One more time, Mike. Be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. So the word of God got to impartate in your mind. In order for those temptations not to come about you, you have to apply the word of God to your life. Amen. I see a lot of men and women of God strong in the faith that not applying the word of God to your life. How can you be a Christian if you're not being a doer of God's word? Amen. So we have to learn how to be doers of God's word. Not just you, yeah, yeah, then you go home, you start doing something else. You have to apply it. Me, myself, here on this microphone, I have to apply it. That's why I pray to God every day. Oh God, please, let me not be tempted. I beg you. Amen. Church, say I will be a doer of the word. I will be a say I will pass the test. Say Lord, restore me. Lord, say Lord, I won't be tempted. Lord, I won't be. Say Lord, I will be doing of your word. Lord, I will be a doer. Let us rise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And this is Tom. Thank you, Lord. I will hand the microphone to the pastor. But those who've been in a temple situation, who going through problem. Who want to encounter Jesus in their life? Like I mentioned in my testimony, I was a weed head pot smoker. I was budgeting myself to sin, meaning I was budgeting myself all the money, I was making serious money. It, it got to the point that Lord dealt with me and the Lord humbled me right away. I was like, oh, wow, I had three cars, 17 years old, three cars, flying two cars, cars after cars after cars after cars. The Lord dealt with me, you know what God did? Well, God was ready to change me, he took all away. I had almost $15,000 in my account, but I was young and I didn't know how to do nothing. All I wanted to do was sin. The Lord had to deliver me right out of it. He took everything. Now I'm humble to the point, I'm, my wife can laugh at me. She said, you're too humble. I don't even want to go to the mall. I don't even want to look at my tickle stick. That's how humble I am. I don't, I don't want to know that all I want is Christ. The Lord dealt with me. I, I, the Lord took all those good parts I have away from me. Now look what I got. A humble man called Brian the Hunter. I'm so happy. I'm so happy because Christ. So I tell the man who took that God who never in here want to receive Jesus as the Lord and Savior. All going through problems that's tempted to them. All want to be delivered. I want y'all to walk in the altar. Let me pass the microphone to the man of God. Hallelujah. Clap for Jesus. Clap for Jesus. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. Clap for Jesus. Hallelujah. Talk about Jesus, amen. amen. Let me tell you, they asked Satan, they said, Satan, why do you keep doing the same thing? He said, because it works. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. There is a hole in your life that the devil keeps passing through to get to you. Hallelujah. And until you shut that hole, until you shut that, that, that entrance way, he's going to keep passing through. Hallelujah. So if there is no shame. In this, hallelujah. Because the Bible says, if you regard iniquity in your heart, God's not going to hear you anyway. There is a demon that we all struggle with. So coming up here, hallelujah, there is no shame. Even I myself as a pastor, everyone has something in their life, hallelujah. But guess what? We have the opportunity to leave it at the altar, hallelujah. Even if you just, you're, maybe you're not sure 
hell. Maybe you received Jesus a long time ago. Maybe you're just getting it now. Maybe it means something to you now. You can even come to the altar and rededicate yourself. Come on, everyone should be making their way up here. Hallelujah. Come on, just circle, just circle around. Hallelujah. We bless God so much. So Lisa, come on. Come on, um, and anoint these people as they come up here. Let us pray for people today that God will bless them. Hallelujah. You know, we all go through problems, God. We all go through problems. Thank you. 